Hi, and welcome to Quadratic Functions and Models Part 2. My name is Tuesday J. Johnson. I'm a lecturer at the University of Texas El Paso and an assistant professor at Doniana Community College. So in Part 2, earlier we saw how to find a vertex of quadratics and how to graph a basic quadratic equation. We looked a little bit about revenue uh, as a function of price times quantity. I don't like these lectures getting too long, so I stopped it there, and now we'll do the rest of the examples. Let's just pick up with some uh, word problems. I don't like where that one's laying, so let's move it over a little bit. There we go. So, here's an example. Daily oil production by Pemex, Mexico's national oil company, for 2001 through 2009 can be approximated by this given function. And this is in millions of barrels per day, and T is time and year since the start of 2000. Now this... That's fine, it's not too overwhelming, but there's kind of a lot going on. What do I need to do with it? According to the model, in what year was oil production the greatest? Well, greatest is going to tell me I'm looking at a vertex, right? I have a parabola that faces down, so it has a max maximum. The greatest is the vertex. In what year? Find the T value of the vertex. All right. This question I have in green, how many barrels per day were produced that year? Well, P is the amount of production in millions of barrels per day. So, how many barrels per day were produced that year? How many barrels? We're going to find the Y value, or the P of T, after we find the T value of the vertex. So, let's take a look. The vertex is T equals negative B over 2A. My B is negative, uh, excuse me, is 0.2. I have my negative out in front. B is 0.2. Denominator 2 times A, so that's 2 times a negative 0.022. Do my little arithmetic here. 2 times a negative 0.022 is a negative 0.044. The negative in the front and the negative in the denominator make it a positive. And if I take 0.2 and I divide it by 0.044, I'm going to end up with 4.54545454. So I just wrote it with the little bars of repeating here. Now, if I put in this 4.5, I'm going to round it to 4.5. If I evaluate the function at 4.5, I put 4.5 in for all my t values, I'll end up with 3.35. What does this mean? T is the year since the start of 2000. So this is four and a half years later. So in the year 2004, about midway through the year, the greatest production, because we're looking at the vertex, was about 3.35 million barrels per day. Can you find a vertex? Fantastic. Do you know that you should find a vertex? And can you interpret the answer afterwards? That's where the application of the information you know comes in. The latest demand equation for your gaming website, www.wastingstudenta.net, is given by Q equals negative 100x plus 1500, where Q is the number of users who log on per month, and X is the log on fee you charge. Your internet provider bills you as follows. You have a site maintenance fee of $50 per month, and you have a high volume access fee of 30 cents per log on. So this is all going to go into some kind of costs, and I don't know, let's see what's going on. The first thing we want to do is find the monthly cost as a function of the logon fee x. So the site maintenance fee is a fixed cost, that's $50 per month. High volume access fee, 30 cents per logon. The logons x, hmm, how did that happen? Well, that 30 cents is not dealing directly with X, right? That's per logon. But we know the demand is given to us as negative 100 X plus 1500. X is the logon fee. For this logon fee, this is my quantity demanded. This is the number of logons. So 30 cents per logon gives us a cost function of 30 cents per Q, so times Q, plus the 50 site maintenance fee, which simplifies to 30 cents multiplied by the negative 100 X plus 1500 plus the 50. Don't forget about the 50 on the end. All I did was replace my Q with what Q was equal to. And 30 cents multiplied by a negative 100 is a negative 30 times X. 0.3 
times 1,500 is 450. 450 plus 50 gives us our 500. So make sure you do this distribution. Add in the 50 and you'll get 500 as your fixed cost. There's my mon monthly cost function um, of the logon fee with a logon fee of X dollars. Now what's the monthly profit? We know that revenue is price times quantity, always. In this case, my price is X, the quantity demanded is negative 100 X plus 1500. And so when I multiply X times everything in quantity, I'll get negative 100 X squared plus 1500 X. Keep in mind, there's never a guaranteed or a fixed revenue. But why do we even care about revenue? This says find the monthly profit. But if we know a cost, we have to also know a revenue in order to find profit because profit is revenue minus cost. So I found my revenue function, always price times quantity. Subtract off the cost function we found in the previous slide. Make sure you distribute, subtracting a negative 30x, that's adding 30x, so 1500x and 30x. Minus the 500, so make sure you have a negative 500 and our x squared didn't have anything to simplify. So we found the monthly profit function. Notice it's quadratic, so the graph is a parabola. The A value is negative, so it opens down, which means the profit has a maximum. That's good. Can you imagine wanting to minimize profit? Who wants to do that? Uh, so let's maximize profit. Uh, step three, determine the logon fee you should charge to obtain the largest possible monthly profit. Well, as soon as I see the word largest, I know I'm looking for the vertex, and we're in this, the section on quadratics. Uh, the fee value, right? determine the fee you should charge. I know the fee is the x value. The x value of the vertex is what I'm looking for. So we know that the vertex is at x equals negative b over 2a. My b value from the previous slide was 1530. My a value was a negative 100, so I have negative 1530 divided by a negative 200. The two negatives make it positive. 1530 divided by 200 is $7.65. So you should charge $7.65 in this particular situation in order to maximize your monthly profit. What will you make? Like, how big are your eyes getting right now? The profit is the y value of the vertex. So we put that $7.65 everywhere we saw the x, the log on fee. Let our calculator do the big work. We can make $5,352.25 of profit every month for running this site, www.wastingstudentaid.net. I'm not saying it's a good idea, but it's a pretty nice uh, take-home paycheck. Oh, taxes will come out of it. It's not as big as you think it is. All right. Example five. Packham in Real Estate is building a new housing development. The more houses it builds, the less people will be willing to pay due to crowding and smaller lot sizes. In fact, if it builds 40 houses in this particular development, it can sell them for $200,000 each. But if it builds 60 houses, it will only be able to get $160,000 each. That's a lot of information. You get to that point and you're like, ah, what do I do? Always look to the end. Look, look at the end of the question. Look at your, your action statements, your questions. Try to figure out what it is that you need to do. So we need to obtain a linear demand equation. Okay. Linear tells me I need two points. I, with two points, I can find slope, find the y-intercept. Good to go. Demand equation tells me I'm going to be using variables Q for quantity and P for price. And hence, all right, so whatever, determine how many houses pack them in should build to get the largest revenue. Oh, largest revenue? I'm pretty sure we're going to have some kind of parabola action. I'm looking for a vertex. And I want to know what is the largest possible revenue. All right, don't look at all of it at the same time. Let's take it step by step. So blah, 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 whatever, overcrowding, we don't care. What we do know is 40 houses at a price of $200,000 each. Quantity 60 houses price of 160,000 each. So our price, 200,000, and our quantity 40 is one point. Our price, 160,000, quantity 60 is our second point, and we can find the slope. Always make sure it's price and then quantity, price and then quantity. And 
When we're doing our slope, it's always y over x. In this case, quantity over price. Houses per dollar. So 60 minus 40 right, gives us 20. 160,000 minus 200,000 gives us a negative 40,000. And when I simplify, positive over a negative makes a negative. Uh, 20 over 40,000, don't go all decimal on me. We can deal with fractions. That's the same as negative 1 over 2,000. To find the y-intercept, I'm going to use this, 200,000 comma 40, because 200,000 is actually easier to do arithmetic with than 160,000. I always choose the easiest, quote, x value. In this case, it's a price, but you know, it's still the x, y, it's the input. So 40 equals negative 1 over 2,000 times 200,000, right? y equals m times x plus b. When I multiply, add it to the other side, I'll end up with my b value is 140. I've now found my linear demand equation. Quantity as a function of price is negative 1 over 2,000 times the price plus 140. Let's keep that in mind as we do the rest of the problem. Determine how many houses Pacman should build to get the largest revenue. How many houses? That's a quantity. All right. We must first find the revenue function because this, this is not quadratic. This is a linear function and a linear function doesn't have a maximum. I want the largest revenue, largest revenue, vertex of the revenue. So I have to find the revenue function. Remember revenue is always price times quantity. My quantity Q function is negative 1 over 2,000 P plus 140, and when I multiply that by P, I get negative 1 over 2,000 P squared plus 140 times P. The largest will occur at the vertex, and that price is negative B, so negative 140, over 2 times A, 2 times a negative 1 over 2,000. That's negative 140 over 1 over 1,000. So many fractions. One hundred and two negatives make a positive. One hundred and forty divided by the reciprocal of a thousand is the same as one hundred and forty thousand. So the price should be one hundred and forty thousand dollars for this these houses. But it said determine how many houses they should build. This is the price. This does not tell us to build one hundred and forty thousand houses. No. The largest quantity of houses, I want to find the quantity. If the price is 140,000, I use the demand equation that we came up earliest or, or came up with earlier to find that they should have 70 houses at a cost of 140,000 each in order to maximize their revenue. What is this largest possible revenue? To end this example, we evaluate the revenue function with the input of 140,000. So my revenue is negative 1 over 2,000 times price squared plus 140 times price. All right, my price we found to be 140,000. And when you do a vertex of a parabola and you do the simplification by hand and you find this ax squared part and you find this bx part, as you're doing the arithmetic, it'll always be that the first part, the ax squared, will simplify to be exactly half of bx, and they'll have opposite signs. If that happens, you know you found your vertex correctly. In this case, negative 9,800,000 plus 19,600,000 gives me a largest revenue, the y value of the vertex of my revenue function at $9.8 million. So you're building 70 houses in this particular development. You're charging $140,000 for each house. And when you do that, you're going to make $9.8 million. Now, don't get all greedy and think, ah, don't forget, this is just revenue. This is not profit. Because it costs money to build houses. It costs for the land. It costs for a whole bunch of things, all the materials. So this is just revenue. This is not overall profit. And would you really want to live in a development where you have 70 houses all together? Oh my goodness, overcrowding. But still, quadratics, uh, demand functions, revenue, all coming together. We can analyze things that go on in our real life using math.
Thanks for listening.